hi 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 hello everyone welcome to my channel relationship stories today one person is asking us am i an idiot for not wanting to help my wife in a life or death situation but before we give our judgment let's hear the story from his side my wife and i had a pretty normal marriage no kids both employed and really happy together For 99% of our relationship we did not have any major problems we made time for each other so on and so forth she recently went away with her friend for a girls trip the first two days after she came back everything was fine and on the third we went to dinner with this friend and her boyfriend dinner went well came home and went to bed wife woke me up in the middle of the night crying saying there was something she had to tell me long story short she had cheated on me the entire trip and her friend had cheated on her boyfriend as well apparently the dinner together caused her to have an attack of conscience because she messaged my wife after i had fallen asleep telling her that she was going to come clean to her partner and my wife had to tell me as well or she would we talked yelled and cried i spent most of the night sick told me it was just a horrible stupid decision and was perfectly happy with me which honestly makes it worse why risk a happy marriage for an affair it was not my fault the usual thing the cheaters say i have been staying at my sister's place while we figure out the divorce Before this went down she had been scheduled for test and scans for what we thought were relatively non serious health problems turns out we were wrong as i was just contacted last week by her cousin telling me a scan revealed cancer i got in touch with my wife and we talked she proved her diagnosis and filled me in on some details she was understandably terrified and begged me to come back to talk to her hug her give her a chance to be there with her i told her i wish her all the best i'm very sorry for what she is going through and know she is strong enough to make it through but while i had help financially from a distance i was not physically going back they have been harassing me telling me to man up and go to her my own friends are split 50 out of 50 I don't want to go back before anyone pulls this is probably why she cheated god no we had a good marriage we had a sit down talk every month to discuss anything wrong we were solid she just chose to take a chance on a quick thrill despite knowing cheating is 100% deal breaker for me she never even planned to tell me until her friend forced her while i certainly don't think anyone deserves this and i'm sorry it happened to her in my opinion her diagnosis doesn't change our situation i feel it will be harder on both of us with me being there knowing i won't forgive her when it's over it feels like a prolonging the inevitable and i feel like my obligation to her ended when she chose to betray our marriage she has family and friends so she is not alone I care about the woman I thought I married but I no longer love who she turned out to be so I feel it had be unfair to both of us for me to be there I am not trying to punish her but my heart just is not in it anymore I am the idiot for doing this guys My opinion about this issue is OP it sounds like you have made a difficult decision based on your personal values and feelings about the situation While it is understandable that your wife's diagnosis of cancer has caused some emotional turmoil for both of you, it is ultimately up to you to decide what you you feel is the best for your own well-being and the well-being of your relationship. But it is important to remember that everyone's experiences and feelings are valid, and there is no right or wrong way to handle the situation like this. It may be helpful to seek support from therapist, a counselor or a trusted friend or family to process your emotions and make a decision that feels right for you. Ultimately, only you can determine whether or not you are the idiot in this situation. It may be helpful to reflect on your motivations for your actions and consider how they align with your values and beliefs. Now, we will see what our friends think about this issue. our friend once said 
Not an idiot. This is something I have struggled with myself for a while and needs to be said. You are not responsible for the happiness of another, especially at the cost of your own. You deserve to be loved and cared for and treated right. It's truly unfortunate what has happened to her, but understand that you are not obligated to run back and comfort her. and pretend like nothing happened you are already helping her situation financially and honestly that's more than some people would even do stay strong and put your own happiness first our friend number 2 said i agree with you that not an idiot i agree with you that acting like a romantic partner to someone you could never truly forgive is just prolonging the inevitable and that it doesn't make sense for you to get back together with her if you do not love her anymore choices like that should never be made out of obligation however there are degrees of support you could offer that do not amount of getting back together and i wonder if you will regret detaching yourself completely if this decision is primarily motivated by resentment you say you care about the woman you thought you married but Don't love who she turned out to be. She did not wake up one day as a completely different person. The same person you married also made a horrible mistake and cheated on you. This same person is now also facing a terrifying future. For your own happiness, I th- I think it would help if you tried to view her infidelity and her diagnosis in light of your entire history with her instead of seeing her mistake as the only real aspect of your relationship. You do not need and probably should not get back together with her but is it possible you are willfully detaching yourself from the ability to be empathetic toward her if so this suppressed emotions might come back to bite you later i'm sorry for what you are going through Story 2 is my son graduated higher secondary in 2012 he spent that first year working full time in a warehouse with a particularly demanding boss he learned a lot about the workforce and developed an amazing work ethic but he quickly realized that he wanted to obtain his college degree so he started community college part time about a year later he got an apartment with his then girlfriend he was still going to college and working after a year he wanted to come home so that he could go to school full time work part time and finish school quicker this is where things go downhill we were happy to have him come home and concentrate on school we told him that we had pay his car insurance and phone but he would be responsible for his car payment We also stressed that he would have to help out around the house in lieu of rent or utilities. He would be responsible for cleaning his bathroom every other week, helping with the dishes, trash and vacuum on a week. Suffice to say, he barely did anything. It caused a lot of tension in my marriage. We had many sit-down conversations with him. It would get her better for a week, then right back how it was. Fast forward to last summer, he's been dating a really great girl who we like and they made plans to go to university out of state starting January this year. Her home situation was very stressful. She already put in 2 years at community college and one semester at a very hard local university and she was great work ethic also. So we decided to offer for her to stay with us until they go. Within 2 weeks of her moving in the plan changed from leaving in Jan to leaving in August. Not what we signed up for. We have a sit down conversation and they want to save up more money before they go. She is going to work two jobs they need more time to find the apartment etc so we all compromise and decide june 1st will be the move out date fast forward to december and i am about to lose my mind our son barely does anything at all he might clean the bathroom every 6 weeks he might put dishes away every 2 weeks virtually nothing she has cleaned the bathroom twice since september that's it I was over it the day after Christmas I sat him down and told him he had to pay me $100 per month for cleaning fees and they had to be out by April 1st I told him I was starting to resent him for not helping that I have taught him everything I can as a parent that I will always love him but it's better for our relationship if we go sooner rather than later he was livid he is barely spoken to me since I feel like I made the right decision as a parent because it really felt like enabling at this point. 
but i also feel horrible because maybe i am being too hard and expecting too much i just know that i love him and my heart is breaking my opinion about this issue is op it's understandable that you feel conflicted about the situation with your son on one hand you want to support him in pursuing his education but on the other hand you also want him to take responsibility for his actions and contribute to the household it's important to recognize that your son is an adult and should be held accountable for his behavior you were clear about your expectations when he moved back in with you and it's not unreasonable to expect him to follow through with his responsibilities Similarly if you offered to have his girlfriend stay with you it's reasonable to expect her to contribute as well that being said it's also important to have open and honest communication with your son it's understandable that he may feel upset by the decision to charge him in a cleaning fees and ask him to leave earlier than planned however it's important to explain to him why you made this decision and how it affects your relationship with him It's possible that he may not have fully understood how his actions were impacting you and your family. In the end, it's up to you to decide the what boundaries you need to set in order to maintain a healthy household. It's important to balance your expectations with compassion and understanding for your son's situation. Remember, you can still love and support him while holding him accountable for his actions. Now, we will see what our friends think about this issue. Our friend once said, "Not an idiot. OP, you said that he was slivid and he is barely spoken to you since. This makes me so mad. You went above and beyond to help him. He didn't keep up his end of the deal by cleaning for months on end, and now he is being spiteful to you for not allowing him to take advantage of you anymore." Your son is incredibly ungrateful and you should absolutely kick him out. Our friend too said everyone is the idiot here i guess i'm going against the green a bit here but i think you both suck you don't suck for laying down the law at this point because he had definitely trampled the boundaries you set however this is your child who i assume you have raised since birth it's not as if the kid is your roommate or a stranger who came to live with you as an 20 year old something and you are saddled with these bad habits You had 18 years to teach him the habits, responsibilities and respect for others that would be result in cleaning etc. I mean of course there are people who are taught it right and still end up as jerks. You can lead your horse to water and all that and maybe that's the case here if I had to bet though I had guess you have never expected him to do anything around the house until he grew up and you were expecting him to magically to be a wonderful adult. You don't raise kids, you raise kids. All that said, he is also the idiot because he is definitely acting entitled and lazy and disrespectful. Story 3. This happened a couple years ago, but it was brought to my attention that the woman is still mad. My mom married a guy I hate when I was 17. His family lived in Indiana and it is about 9 hours of driving to get there. My mom and stepdad insisted we go down there for a visit during the summer. I turned 20. I am now 25. I agreed to go simply because I had not seen my new uncles in a year. Well, one evening my mom and I were sitting outside talking about shaving our legs. Not sure how we ended up there. Honestly, we both agreed that we usually just do a light shave instead of shaving everything. Upper legs, bikini area, etc. Unless we are going to have a thing, we were laughing about it and my step grandma came outside to smoke. Some info on this grandma, she was already mad at me for not calling her Grandma Karen. No joke, that's her name. I didn't call her that because I was 17 when she became part of my family. I already had a grandma. She was mad enough to make it clear I was not welcome to stay at her house with my mom and siblings. Instead, I spent the week at the nearby motel. So anyways, she has my mom and I laughing and asks, "We are laughing and what we are laughing about?" My mom tells her, "We are talking about how lazy we are and don't shave all the time." Karen immediately gets annoyed and not my mom who is married to her son but at me 
she runs on me saying don't you have a boyfriend at the time i had been with a guy for 3 years and lived with him so i told her yeah she then asked me why i am not shaving daily for him i asked her why do i need to she says i should be trying to look nice for him i tell her that my boyfriend doesn't care if my legs have a hair on them and he is aware that women grow hair there she looks ridiculously disgusted by me she is giving me a nasty look and then says do you at least make him dinner every night at this point i am nearly laughing it was 2013 at the time and are you kidding me why would i make him dinner nightly so i tell her no way sometimes i make dinner for both of us but no way in hell do i make him food every night she asks me why not and i tell her because because he is perfectly capable of getting off his ass and making himself some food she says wow i'm surprised that he has not left you yet to which i responded freak of karen and i i ended up catching a plane home the next day because i didn't want to be around her i have not seen her since recently my mom told me that karen is still mad i never apologized to her i don't feel i owe her anything an apology am i the idiot here guys for doing this my opinion about this issue is not an idiot it seems that karen was being rude and judgmental towards you for no reason you were having a harmless conversation with your mom about personal grooming habits and karen interjected with unsolicited and inappropriate comments about your relationship and lifestyle choices you stood up for yourself and responded in a direct and assertive manner which may have been seen as a confrontational by karen however you had every right to defend yourself and your decisions It is understandable that Karen may still hold a grudge but it's not your responsibility to apologize for her behavior. If anything she should be apologizing to you for making you feel unwelcome and attacking you for no reason. In summary you are not the idiot in this situation. Now we will see what our friends think about this issue. Our friend once said, "Not an idiot. The whole point of an apology is to repair a broken relationship. Since you don't seem to care that you don't have a relationship with Karen, there is no point in apologizing to her. And in an insincere apology is worse than none, in my opinion." Our friend too said, "When not an idiot." When people don't know their place and get in other people's business, they get what they deserve. I have been told to freak off because I wandered my nose into stuff that had nothing to do with me.